Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. Today we're going to talk about the OWASP Top 10 Web Application Security Risks. Stay tuned. OWASP is an open source community dedicated to enabling organizations to conceive, develop, acquire, operate, and maintain applications that can be trusted. OWASP seeks to educate designers, developers, engineers, and business owners on current security risks that you can find in the IT world today. This open source community not only focuses on other open source projects, but you can also find them supporting some commercial products and applications as well. The top 10 list that they built really kind of focuses heavily on the most frequent security risks that you would find with web applications. And that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. The top 10 list is established by industry leaders from all over the world. The top 10 list contains the most critical vulnerabilities that you can find in web applications. Following this list will help developers and security professionals understand what they need to be aware of within their environments and applications. So before we begin with this list, I wanna let you guys know that I followed along with Ken Underhill from Cybrary, and for you guys, it's absolutely free to access the top 10 OWASP list on the Cybrary website. So make sure you guys check out the link in the description below. This is a sponsored video by Cybrary, and you guys can also save 50% off of your premium membership if you guys use the coupon code ITCQ50. But really what I wanted to focus on with Cybrary is if you guys go and watch Ken's videos, you really can follow along with simulated environments and actually understand some of these different vulnerabilities and apply them in a real world type of scenario. So that's really cool that not only can you just follow along with the videos, but you can actually do some of these SQL injections and things like that. So make sure you guys check out that video and definitely follow along with Ken in the things that he's doing over there because he's an awesome trainer and I always hear good things about him from LinkedIn. So starting off this list, number one is injection. Yeah, SQL injection, you got LDAP injection, and you have CRLF injection. So with different injections, you can find that you can utilize different bits of code and actually inject them into submission forms on websites, for instance. And sometimes you can get a lot of information back that you normally shouldn't receive. So injections is definitely one of those top priorities right there that you should be aware of as you're creating different web applications. Maybe you guys want to be in bug bounty and start making money finding different bugs. Using different injection sequences and code is one of the most common used vulnerabilities that you will find within web applications. By utilizing different injection methods, you guys can maybe find different information such as PII, passwords, usernames, and other secure documentation and information on users or website data. And just to make another quick note, you guys can follow along with Ken on the Cybrary course and actually do some of these different SQL injections. Follow along and understand how a SQL injection works, for instance. It's really cool. I was actually following along with him on that course and it was very interesting to me. So make sure you guys check that out. Number two on the list is broken authentication. You most commonly see this when user and session authentication is incorrectly configured within an environment or within a web application. This allows attackers to compromise session tokens keys and passwords. This can allow attackers to potentially take control of user accounts. So they can potentially take control of admin accounts or just other user accounts and do some pretty bad, bad things with that. Examples of broken authentication are weak passwords, weak credential recovery, no multi-factor authentication, and session IDs in the URL. Ken goes over this in more detail, so again, make sure you check that out. Number three on the list is sensitive data exposure. This is most commonly seen when web applications and APIs that are not properly protecting sensitive data, such as your PHI, that's your personal health information. So it's most commonly seen within uh, financial industries and health industries where sensitive data exposure can be really detrimental to a environment or to you personally. So like we said, this enables attackers to obtain information to commit fraud or even steal your identity by gathering some of the sensitive of data uh, from these different attacks methods that Ken talks about in this course. You can prevent this by applying better controls within your environment, encrypting data, and also by creating strong passwords or passwords that are salted, so it makes it just a little bit more difficult for attackers. Number four on the list is XML external entities. This is common with poorly configured XML processors that allow external references and entities to perform remote code execution and expose internal files or file shares. You can prevent this by using less complex data formats like JSON, avoid serialization, 
patching web applications and their uh, components, as well as whitelisting server-side input. Number five is broken access control. This is due to improperly configured or missing restrictions on authenticated users. This would allow attackers to access user accounts, sensitive data and information, as well as being able to modify data and modify access rights to user accounts. You could prevent this by denying by default, by access control, by log failures, and disabling web server directory listings. Number six on the list is security misconfiguration. This is due to improper control configuration or misconfiguration of security headers or error messages that contain sensitive information that attackers can utilize to access some of uh, protected data and things like that. You can also find that by not configuring things properly or patching some of your different applications or frameworks and their components, it could allow attackers an easy access to your environment. You can prevent this by hardening systems, removing unnecessary features, and of course, patching your systems, your applications, and anything that needs some type of update. Do that on a frequent basis, and that can definitely help harden your environment. Number seven on this list is cross-site scripting or XSS. XSS flaws allow attackers to inject client-side scripts into applications that can then be used to direct users to malicious websites or other malicious acts that they're trying to configure within their type of attack. You can prevent this by separating untrusted data, using frameworks that escape XSS and escaping untrusted HTTP requests. Again, Ken goes into more detail on how all this works and operates and gives you a lot more information in that Cyberry course. So again, make sure you guys check that out. Number eight is insecure deserialization. Something to note before we talk about this further is that serialization is turning data into a stream of bytes and, and deserialization is turning that stream of bytes back into a copy of the original object. Flaws in deserialization can enable attackers to execute code into applications remotely, edit, modify, or delete serialized objects, and as well as perform injection attacks and elevate privileges. You can prevent this by integrity checks or digital signatures and isolating code and encrypting serialized data. Number nine on the list is using components with known vulnerabilities. You find this frequently when developers use open source applications, frameworks, or different APIs, and they're not updating them frequently. So there might be a known vulnerability in one of the libraries that the developer used. And if you're not updating that library to patch that specific uh, vulnerability, then that could be a instance of using components with known vulnerabilities. Of course, you can prevent this by making sure that you guys are patching things, removing unneeded items, using trusted sources, and of course, inventory version checks, which is really important because you guys wanna make sure that you maintain a list of what versions the different libraries or APIs are that you are using so that you can make sure you're keeping up to date. So having documentation of that is really clutch here. Closing out this list in number 10 is insufficient logging and monitoring. This is really important here because improper Proper monitoring of failed login attempts or suspicious activity can allow attackers more time to really infiltrate this web application or your environment. So by not having proper alerts set up that will notify you of failed login attempts or, or suspicious activity can definitely be very detrimental to your applications or your environment. It's really important to make sure that you guys have the proper alert set in place because if you have logs of you know thousands of failed logon attempts, that might be pretty suspicious and you might wanna look into that further. But piggybacking off that a little bit more, having alerts set up, especially when you're getting a ton of failed login attempts or other types of suspicious activity, you guys can set an incident response team in place to handle issues like this and kind of deter attackers from going any further. So as we mentioned earlier in this video, you guys can follow along with Ken on cyberry.it. Make sure you guys use the link in the description below. Use the coupon code ITCQ50 to save 50% off of your premium membership. But you guys can actually follow along with Ken and really dive deep into some of these different vulnerabilities and have a better understanding. This video is created so I could give you guys an idea of what OWASP is and what this top 10 list represents. For more information, make sure you guys check out cyberry.it and Ken's course, and make sure you guys hit him up on LinkedIn too. Some of the Cyberry instructors are some of the most engaging individuals that I've seen on social media, and it's really awesome to see that. So make sure you guys check out Cyberry and Ken because they do a fantastic job of teaching you the things that you need to know, especially about the OWASP top 10. That's all I got for you guys in today's video. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, make sure you guys hit me up in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. 
as always, take it easy.